Hey guys, welcome to my channel, and uh, today we're going to be making a guide for Hunter and Sniper in the North American version of Ragnarok Origins. Uh, quick disclaimer, we're only going to be doing it until level 70. That's the maximum of the gear that we can get in the North American version at the moment. We cannot record in Korea, we cannot record in Japan, we cannot record in any other server, because if we do, we get suspended. So, we're going to get straight to the point here since we don't have a lot of time in this uh, CBT. So, step number one, as a hunter, the best, hands down, the best DPS build, whether you want a PvP, whether you want an MVP, or you want to farm fast, level fast, is always going to be the double strafe hunter. Uh, it is no contest. The agility, dex, luck, uh, auto blitz hunter is too stat hungry early and doesn't really start amping up until like around the level 70 phase of the game. One recurring theme that you'll notice in Ragnarok Origins is that at certain levels in the game, the meta shifts constantly. And that's why you'll find like uh, Spiral Pierce Knights with their Cardos at level 70 start to power spike. And it's the same with uh, Snipers as well. Uh, Sniper is one of the more strongest classes as of right now in Korea anyway. They are one of the top fragging classes in War of Imperium because of Sharpshooter. But as of right now, we're going to focus on the early game for this class. So, step number one, stats. I know a lot of people just show you their stats and don't explain like how they level it, but I'm going to explain it to you real quick. From the start of the game, I want you to level your agility to 30. The reason why you want to do that is because you want to, it helps a little bit with your, not only your attack speed and attack speed, which equals to animation for your double strafe. And that's why you need the, the agility 34. After agility 30 though, it does get a little bit expensive raising it further than that. So I don't think it's worth it in my opinion. Some people even stop at 20s. I personally prefer 30. And after that, you are going to go straight for dex. Everything on dex there. You don't waste anything else on any other points here. Not No intelligence form or SP. Not, nothing like that at all. Uh, even though I have 7 points, I'm not going to put it put it on luck. I'm not going to put it on it or vit for a little bit more tankiness. Not at all. You're going to focus at all on dexterity because that is how you achieve the maximum amount of DPS. And next up after stats is skill. Skills for the first job. You're gonna max out double strafe. A bit of debate between people with Owl's Eye and Vulture's Eye. Honestly, early game, you don't really need a lot of Vulture's Eye. Like, I probably stopped mine at like level 4 or 5, and that was more than enough for me. Sometimes I felt like it wasn't even needed. Owl's Eye, however, does give you 10 total dexterity, so that is pretty much a must when it comes to leveling. Now, take note though that because there are certain events like arenas, depending on when the game starts, if you're going to join the PvP modes of the game, uh, Vulture's Eye is a must. Especially if you're joining the 3v3 arenas and such, Vulture's Eye is a must. If you're going for early MVPs, for example, where you still have like limited skill points like we did when we got um, uh, the North American first uh, kill on uh, Angeling and not North American first MVP period. I kind of had to level my Vulture's Eye because I had to maintain maximum distance. Not only do I put myself at less risk of dying, but less risk of damage, which means like less uh, resources or heals invested into me and more into our tanks. And that was uh, a lot of the reason why we managed to kill the, the bosses there and still managed to get MVP at the end because our tank didn't die. None of us died. So if you are not concerned with any of those things, however, uh, Vulture's Eye, you can actually keep it at level 1 or level 3 or level 4. It's up to you. I would focus on Owl's Eye first. And then after that, we're going to go hop onto Attention and Concentration because that 10 dex, 10 agility is pretty huge. You are going to be guzzling a lot of mana pots. Now, thankfully, there are a lot of ways to get copper in this game. So if you are spending for the premium currency, uh, you'll actually have an easier time because you can then buy copper. Right, uh, it's not too big of a deal. One of the main things as well for Double Strafe Hunter is Elemental Arrows. So you can buy these in the same NPC that you can buy potions at. These are pretty huge. If you have Elemental Advantage, which gives you plus 75% more damage, plus 50% more damage, that is huge, especially for killing MVPs or farming in general. Um, you could go from killing a monster at a higher level than you with three Double Strafes to two Double Strafes. And that saves you not only SP, it saves you time on those kills, which leads to greater EXP. Do pay attention to these because they will help you out a lot. And maintaining max damage on that MVP is pretty, pretty huge. It also gives you a lot higher chance to get last hits in or the last hit in. Uh, especially with champs not being a thing at the beginning of the game. As for food, I would always recommend this right here. Basilite Clam gives you ranged physical damage. Always get that one. 
And when it comes to elixirs, I don't have elixirs. I do actually. Uh, always go for the dexterity potion. And then next up, we're gonna go to the weapon part of uh, the guide. Like I said earlier, we are only up to level 70. Honestly, all these beginner gear right here, you switch it out so quickly that it doesn't even matter at the beginning really. So we're gonna try to skip those out. If you notice this like special looking ring here, this is coming from, at the very least in Korea, it came from a premium currency package that you have to buy. I personally don't think it's all that worth it for what you get from it with the attack plus 20. Because like I said, you're going to level so fast that it doesn't even become worth it, right? Like this one right here at level 45. If you have nothing else, then by all means, sure, this is kind of decent. It's kind of nice to have. If you have the money to spend for it, go ahead. You're also supporting the game in that way anyway. The other thing is like because you get this right here, which gives you dexterity. Gives you attack, gives you more attack for every 10 points of dexterity, and it's a lot easier to get, a lot easier to farm as well. After this is when crafting starts to kick in a lot more, level 50 plus. This one is a bit of a no-brainer. Falcon Blitz is our go-to. Uh, it gives you double strafe skill damage plus 15%. Double strafe ignores target's defense by 10%. It's hands down the best one that we can get out of this whole thing. Next up is armor. It's you know, it's pretty obvious. You, get, you go with the one that gives you more dexterity. Same thing with this right here. It gives you more dexterity. The only thing I would differentiate from, however, is the boots right here. The soft leather boots. Not only does it give you more SP... Uh, it also decreases SP consumption by 10%, which is, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but it does lighten the load in your pockets a little bit, especially if you are free to play. So I would definitely recommend that. Uh, later on, you get the better version of the glove. So the only thing like worth mentioning in this area would probably be the gloves, the better version of the gloves. If you can get them, if not, it is not a big deal. Don't even worry about it, right? So that's a whole level curve that you don't have to worry anything about really. So keep your Falcon Blitz. Now we get to the level 70 to 79. This is when you start your transition to agility, dex, luck, hunter uh, build. And the reason for that is this very bow right here, the Ixion wing, which gives you better bonuses the higher attack speed. Not only does it give you a higher chance of proccing that, it also increases your damage based on your attack speed. And that includes this attack speed plus 30% for 7 seconds here, which also applies to the added damage. Like I said, this video is just for the double strafe hunter, which early game is king when it comes to DPSing. Now, I will be making another guide for agility, dex, luck, hunter in the future. The only thing is, like I said, I can't, I can't record weapons higher than what they're showing us right now because like I said, I'll get suspended. Yeah, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. I know that there are going to be some uh, questions regarding to like how viable Sniper is when it comes to free to play. Probably the question that people are quite curious about is the scalability of Sniper. Like I said before, Sniper is one of the most highest fragging or top fragging uh, classes in uh, War of Imperium in Korea. So you don't have to worry anything about that. Not only that, you're also a class that makes it very, very easy to farm out your monster glossary uh, or monster research book, as we used to call it. Some people actually make alt accounts as hunters or snipers to help them farm these out. And one of the main things that you're going to see early game as well is this pouring right here. And that's why I have like all these skills on the pouring because pourings drop these pouring dolls thing is when you go to the collection shop let's say like this is what i'm aiming for right now the halo i'm getting all these pouring drops right here i'm also trying to get these from certain mobs the good part about this is that after your battle time is done for you can still get this loot which is the biggest thing look forward to more guys i'm going to be rushing out guys because uh the early levels pre-70 is actually pretty simple Nothing too complicated. The meta has already kind of been defined. I do believe that class balance is not a regional thing as other people might otherwise suggest. It is a game centered thing. And that's why like even if there are any changes to the weapons, even if there are changes to how certain builds work, it's not going to be major enough to change the current meta. And if it does, I'll be sure to inform you guys right away and I'll make another video of that or make a quick post of it just to be sure to inform you guys. But yeah, that's for now. And uh, that's it for today. Hopefully, I'll see you soon in the next video. Peace. I literally don't know this. You kind of smell. What the? <laughs> like a baka. Yeah, and yeah. Sarakabar, 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 whatever.